Morning. Okay, there we go. So I am talking to the one and only Chicho <laughs> ASMR. Such such a pleasure to be with you today, man. Uh, thanks for the invite, brother. Thanks for the invite. Absolutely. So I'll just tell you kind of what I'm um, doing right now. So I'm in a, a podcasting class, podcasting production class, okay. and I'm also a neuroscience major. So um, my interest in ASMR is kind of twofold. Like I'm going to talk to a professor of neuroscience about like what kind of the neural underpinnings are for this sensation because that's been very not studied at all it's it's no. very it's completely interesting no. um and then and then i wanted i just wanted to talk to some of my favorite asmr artists you being at the top i was very happy when you <laughs> agreed to interview and i want to talk kind of about not only your method and your mission but kind of like the culture of asmr in which you mm -hmm. play a very a very large part um but it's also it's not just asmr it's like what i say to people is i came to you for the asmr but i stayed for um the content and and your you know political uh you know economic kind of beliefs information and stuff like that so we definitely mm -hmm. need to kind of to get into that um but yeah so just like a very general Sorry, I have some I have some things written down. Um, so just like a very general uh, kind of starting point, like how did this channel um, come about? And I know that you have many different channels, so maybe there's yeah. a question to the math ASMR, and then there's a sorry, there's a there's an answer to the math channel, and then an answer to the Chicho channel. Yeah. Um, how did it come about? Uh, I started. Uh, I mean, I didn't. Uh, Jeez, um, it's 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 layered, right? Um, I didn't plan on, I didn't even know what ASMR was when I, I I knew the sensation, but I didn't know it was a thing called ASMR uh, until a few years after I started creating content, uh, blogging and sharing information. Um, so I guess the the main reason that I got online was because um, I wasn't finding enough of the type of discussion dialogue that. I think was important to have online online at the time and at the time it was uh, mid 2000s i started i didn't have any plans on making any videos at the time i just wanted to share political economic information because i think you know at the time after 9 11 I, I realized that we we're headed down a very dark path mm -hmm. and the dark path is here right now mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so you could see the groundwork being laid by centralized power to bring us to this point and their idea of where we should be in the future which is very dystopian mm -hmm. uh, extremely dystopian um so i started writing articles in 2005 2006 uh, 2007 and i was writing a lot a lot of politics a lot of economics i was warning people about a pending economic collapse um some people took that to heart and they saved themselves and their family a lot of money in the 2008 financial scam. People say it's, mm -hmm. it was, you know, collapse and whatever they call it. It was it was pure scam, right? Yeah, it, was it, was it, it was designed. It was designed. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And the main main purpose of that engineered collapse was to eliminate a certain percentage of the middle class. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I did all that stuff and I was writing and I, I kept on writing the political stuff until 2012, mm -hmm. really heavy. And in 2012, I wrote a piece saying that this was going to be my last really strictly political discussion because they had laid down all the groundwork of where, where we were headed and it was World War III. Mm -hmm. And if we didn't wise up, we would be facing extreme calamity right mm. and i didn't and I, one thing i did in that article i quoted aaron dotty roy stating that you know i i didn't want to write any more politics and economic stuff because i felt like i was repeating myself because i was i've been writing this for six seven years telling people look man this is not a good place to be like we ought to wise up somehow uh with obama getting into power you know the anti-war movement and the people that should have held power accountable walked away some of us didn't kept on pushing it and that was sort of my last political strictly political economic piece that i wrote intent very very in depth i had lots of links link, linking up everywhere and whatnot 
but during that time when I was writing politics and economics, um, um, I have a lot of relatives in the United States. And um, one of my relatives needed help with mathematics. And I've been teaching mathematics since late 1990s, early 2000s. And uh, the, I love teaching. Teaching to me is, uh, it's, it's brilliant. It's really, it's extremely challenging. Uh, it, once I got over the, the, the lies of centralized power where they, you know, they, there's something that they tell people a lot. That's a sort of a mantra, a false mantra in our society where they say, those who can't do teach, which is one of the biggest bullshit pieces exactly like i've ever heard right because once you look into it you realize oh my god like uh, Feynman was a teacher einstein was a teacher like some of the greatest minds uh, beethoven was a teacher some of the greatest minds that humanity has ever produced were teachers and and then i realized the reason for that is is because if you can explain something simple enough something complicated, simple enough for people to understand, that means you understand that thing extremely well, mm -hmm. which sort of links up. And I, for me, I didn't, even though I have my degree in geophysics and mathematics, I really didn't understand mathematics until I started teaching it. And that's what really has just kicked me up to another state of being because I realized I was full of shit before. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I was just a product of the centralized indoctrination centers i knew how to do but i didn't know why i did okay mm -hmm. and if i came across something that certain methods did not uh, adequately explain uh, i didn't know what to do right mm -hmm. so in you know i was teaching for about five uh, uh, more than that about seven years by that time uh, pretty full on and then my relative from uh, california he needed mathematics help. Mm -hmm. And I try to help him out online with emails and mm -hmm. chatting and stuff like this. And it wasn't working out. So I realized I had to uh, make math videos and mm -hmm. I had no intention of being in front of a camera ever. Mm -hmm. uh, but for family, you do anything, right? Uh, so, and uh, he was a skateboarder and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was a kid, right? Mm -hmm. So I tried to, make it interesting and entertaining and just fast paced right yeah because that's what school does school slows people down to a level where they get they lose interest and mm -hmm. they don't they can't connect the dots fast enough so they lose the connection from one point to another um so i started making math videos and the way i made them i made a sort of urban graffiti i took my tripod and camera and big gigantic chalk pieces and i went up into the city and i found walls and i did graffiti gorilla style right mm -hmm. you know i look around find a nice wall make sure there's no security around set up my camera <laughs> try, yeah. do it as fast as i could and you know lay down lay down the information as fast as that as fast as possible and pack up and take off and go edit the videos and stuff like this and then um so I did that for uh, a few years, three, four years. I laid out a lot of foundation of mathematics and a lot of people were sending me messages that, you know, oh, these math videos are helping them out. So that kept me going because for me, if I can help all more people, the better, right? I could only teach so many people individually. Uh, my, my time is limited. <laughs> like, exactly. uh, yeah. Of, like, as, as, as are all of our times. As are <laughs> all of our times, right? I realized that I, I had to reach a larger audience uh, and create some of this content because you know when I was teaching pe students individually sometimes I would have parents knocking on my door at like seven o'clock in the morning saying my you know my kid has a test can you teach him I'm like but dude you can't come to my house yeah <laughs> knocking oh, wow. on my door right like you can't do that like that's not cool yeah. right um so I kept on doing that and, you know, I got into teaching more mathematics, creating a curriculum as best as I can right now, stuff like that. And, and I came across an article talking about ASMR. Um, mm -hmm. And at the time I had made ASMR videos, but I didn't know there were ASMR videos. And the ASMR video that I'd made were sort of my beard combing videos, right? Talking mm -hmm. about beards, facial hair and stuff like that. And it's a sensation that I felt, right? Mm -hmm. And it calms me down. It's good for the soul. It's good for the spirit. It's mm -hmm. it's meditative. It lets you ground and 
and, and be at peace to a certain degree and realize what's important and what's not, right? Filter out the noise, right? Filter out the noise. Uh, and that makes you focus on what's important. So one of the things I did, I, you know, I was making, aside from math videos and eating videos, and this, I made the beard, I make facial hair videos, and I had made that video. And uh, I came across an article that talked about ASMR. I was like, wait a second, this is what I'm feeling. So I went to a forum and I asked, you know, is this ASMR? Uh, if it is, I have a longer version because I made it short, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I said, I have a longer version of this. If if you guys are interested, I'll cut it longer. And mm -hmm. and people said, oh my God, yes, please. <laughs> I went ahead and did that. And once I loaded that on, I hadn't really thought about uh, creating math ASMR videos because I really like the graffiti style, gorilla style. I actually, you know, I have my calm side, but I'm extremely... Speedy Gonzalez as well as a drummer, mm -hmm. like you know, right? It, it when the time calls for it, you we thrive on it to a certain degree, exactly. right? Like drummers I've met that tend to be very peaceful, mm -hmm. right? But it's chaotic, uh, sometimes not at peace, sometimes not at peace at times, right? Something bothers you, you need to get on that drum set and just go ballistic for multiple hours, right? Like. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to play my drums. You must have done as well until, you know, not only calluses, but I would bleed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You get cracks and you're, you got blood. And that to me was oh, purification that it's, to me. Yeah. It's go like, ahead. Go ahead. It's like when, it's like when your love and energy for the instrument surpasses your bodily capabilities and you just oh my god yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Euphoric. brilliant it's euphoric it's yeah. euphoric it's euphoric it's it's brilliant uh, um so um you know i made you know a couple of asmr videos and stuff like this and people contacted me saying hey chicho listen we get math anxiety can you make asmr math videos and i was like uh sure i can give it a shot right uh and one of the reasons i I said, sure, is because that's the way I teach. I mm -hmm. did, one of the things I do with my students is because th th I th I know you're doing this for schoolwork, but I, I detest our centralized in indoctrination centers. I, yeah. th there, th there is use for them in post-secondary anyway, not mm -hmm. elementary and high school is garbage. <laughs> uh, but, but if you're focused enough and if you know what you want to do, you go to university, college, post-secondary, polytechnical institute, whatever it is, you can get the education you need, mm -hmm. right? You can, you're going to hit, hit some hurdles, but if you're focused, you can get it, mm -hmm. right? Um, so there is a use for it, but I was, I'm not a fan of centralized indoctrination uh, mm -hmm. centers. And a lot of people were contacting me saying, you know, they get anxiety when they're trying to learn mathematics and stuff like this. Can I make ASMR math videos? And I started making ASMR math videos. Um, and basically, the, what you see, the way I teach mathematics um, in those videos is in large part, not all of my students, because everybody's different. Everybody's different, right? But there are times uh, during my lessons with every student, and sometimes I maintain that state with my students, certain students all the time, where I try to uh, eliminate the anxiety because once the anxiety is gone, then they're more receptive to information. Um, so that's how I got into making ASMR math videos and ASMR other videos, uh, because I think our society needs it. Our, uh, our current political economic system is functions on their keeping people anxious, yeah. uh, peak, you know, getting people to, um, you know, there's a saying that says speed kills. Mm -hmm. And that's not, when I was younger, I just thought they meant, oh, driving fast kills. And I said, yeah, what the hell? I'll just drive. I'm a drummer. I drive. I used to drive insanely fast, like ridiculous, right? No understanding of the consequences, right? And then you get into a few accidents. You realize, okay, speed can kill, right? Or you, you lose some friends along the way. You say, yes, speed kills, right? But it's not just for for driving it's also in life when you tend to make very rapid decisions without thinking it through you know you'd be lucky if they they work out right right mm -hmm. most of the time they don't if you're in a war situation sure you're going to make decisions speedy yeah. gonzalez but mm -hmm. if you're functioning under a 
a state of mind and you're a war all the time, uh, it's not healthy. It's not healthy. Right? So, so that's my story of how I got into making ASMR and stuff. And it's, and it's, and it's quite fascinating because um, this is kind of another thing I'd like to talk about. It seems that you were just kind of making the content that you wanted to make, like mm -hmm. kind of inadvertently ASMR. And then, and then your audience kind of reached out and said, wow, like this is like, they kind of um, qualified it as ASMR. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. at that point, did you kind of start appending like, you know, parentheses ASMR to your videos? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the reasons I did that is because, uh, as you know, I do, I do talk politics and stuff. I didn't want to get into politics, really. I, I really didn't because I've said what I needed to be said back in the mid 2000s to early 2010s. I, you know, I laid down what, where we were headed, mm -hmm. right? Um, I didn't really, I didn't want to make political ASMR videos. I just mm -hmm. wanted to educate, teach people mathematics, teach people talk about food, right? Mm -hmm. like, just talk about healthy living and critical thought and because i think that's really what's missing in our society it's it's mm -hmm. not um well right now discussion on politics and economics is missing because censorship of the yin yang right mm -hmm. uh, very dangerous times very dangerous mm -hmm. times right but i got into making political asmr um for the 2016 elections in the united yeah. states because people kept on saying oh hillary or trump i'm like you guys are asking the wrong question man mm -hmm. like Chicho, can you tell us Hillary or Trump? Hillary? Oh, I'm like, oh man, this is, it was, I was just getting so much of it, right? Yeah. And I said, okay. And at the beginning of that video, I I, I did state, and it took me, um, that was my third or fourth cut of that video. Like I, I had done it like four times, like talking into the camera, like two hours, <laughs> whatever it took yeah. me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't like how it came out. And finally, I just said, look, this is my last take. For those of you that follow my work for anything else, do not watch this video, right? And I told him, do not watch this video. Skip this video because I'm going to talk about things that are going to trigger people. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons it's going to trigger people is because people aren't informed because I know our centralized indoctrination centers don't inform. They're not there to educate. They're there to indoctrinate. So mm -hmm. people don't know history. They don't know the connection, right? They don't know the game at play. Uh, and then it just, the demand picked up and, we started going down a very dark path. Uh, we hit the basically the point of where we thought, where I thought we were going to go with the articles I was writing in the late mid 2000s, early 2010s. And, you know, it, it's not a good place to be. So I had to start uh, giving people my take and sort of information. Uh, I lost a fair bit of, uh, I mean, there's, I'm black, you know, what do you call it? Uh, shadow ban on YouTube. There's no doubt about it. Censored mm -hmm. tube, I call it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they, they unsubscribe people from my channel all the time, oh, right? Man. Yeah, it's it's crazy, right? I mean, you could, I, I look at data. My thing is data. I can see the data, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm on. I I load more stuff on the other platforms. Like Rumble is an amazing platform. Amazing, mm -hmm. right? Amazing, amazing. Uh, Bitshoot, Odyssey, right? Fantastic. So uh so be it like for me i i make the stuff because uh it allows me to sleep at night yeah. uh, i'm not in it uh, you know for financial gain it would be great but that's not mm -hmm. the main purpose uh yeah. it, i will keep on doing what i do because it's the right thing to do that's exactly. it Right. And it, and it helps it helps you sleep at night and it quite literally helps your your followers sleep at night as some um, of them some yeah, of them some don't of them. like what i say <laughs> um, well I, so you said you did the math so you just kind of maybe I, I i would i might assume that you kind of naturally just have this um soft-spoken pleasant like voice that is kind of analogous to to asmr um and and you said that you know uh, that as a method of decreasing anxiety mm -hmm. uh, was a, a a tool to teach math. And I feel mm -hmm. like, would you, would you say that it might be a tool for you to teach all of the things you teach? Be for it, sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah, um, it's about sharing information. It's yeah. about sharing information. And I, and look, uh, I, over time, I've realized that uh, there's a certain way to share information that connects better than other ways. This is more receptive than other ways. Now, it doesn't mean I'm 
like this all the time. Like in person, I could be extremely overwhelming. Yeah. Like when I talk to friends and family and stuff like this, and people tell me this. Uh, but for me, when I'm engaging someone, uh, a family member or, or a friend or an associate in in close proximity personally, because I, mm -hmm. this is real life as well. So I don't want to say in real life, this is real life. Like what mm -hmm. I do is real life online, right? I hate the, you know, get, do something real life. No, this is real life, right? But when I'm engaging someone directly uh, and they have, a, they have a means to talk back to me and stuff like this, then uh, sometimes I tend to be a lot harsher, not with my students. When I teach mathematics, I'm very, very gentle. I'm not there to, uh, to, um, because I really make a distinction when I teach mathematics. I'm not there to engage them about how they should live their lives. Mm. Uh, that's not my purpose. My purpose is to teach them how to use the language of mathematics in their lives, right? No matter what they want to do. Like, mm. you know, I've had students that want to just become millionaires, make lots of money. So mm. I tell them, you know, straight up, they're stupid if they don't learn math because mm -hmm. that's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Learn math, that's the best tool you can acquire to do that, right? Mm -hmm. and musicians, you know, oh, da, 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 music, music. I go, look, man, the foundation of music is mathematics, it's the harmonics, it's the beats, it's this. Yeah. And that's coming from a drummer, of course, right? Yeah, no, it's all for it's us. All, it's, yeah. it's all, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It's all of it. It's all of it. Da, 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 da. It's, yeah. it's, it's the rhythm, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I try to introduce mathematics in that aspect, but for me, um, I've gone through my chaos periods. I mean, one, one of the reasons I've, uh, the, I, I don't, I don't know if I've shared this information with anyone. I might have one during a, during a live stream once, but since you're a drummer, mm -hmm. uh, I love drumming. I loved it. Right. Um, uh, but one time I was in LA and, um, the, I wasn't there with a band or anything. We just party. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was partying pretty hard mm -hmm. and, um, a friend, some friends of mine, we're from, we're from Vancouver and we had gone to LA and we're partying down there. And some friends of mine, I, I had, a, I had, I had, I'd gone hard. So I was at the hotel, just crashed. Right. Mm -hmm. And my friends uh, were still out uh, and they came back with a, a couple of people they met. And those two people were attending music school in LA, one of the top music schools. I, mm -hmm. I don't know the name anymore. Right. And they came in and, I would, and they're like, hey, Chicho, blah, blah, blah. I said, hey, how's it going? I instantly like, well, what's going on? Like, hey, let's go. We're going to go party. We're going to go eat. We're going to do this. Like, oh, okay, right on. Too. I stood up on the bed and that does, you know, put on clothes and we headed out and we started talking. And the two, the two people in the music school, one of them was a bassist. One of them was a, was a guitarist. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we started talking. I said, oh, I'm a drummer. Da, 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 da. I was going. I was rapid. Mm -hmm. That it was, you know, I was a lot younger. I was, how old was I? I was probably like 20 years old or something like this, mm -hmm. right? 19, 20 years old and or 21. Anyway, somewhere around there. And they're like, oh, dude, you must be a good drummer. I go, I'm pretty good, man. I don't know the technicals too much, but I got my heart in there. I go hard. And, yeah. I, you know, people love jamming with me because I was a good, you know, it's just, you know, I, it, I wasn't a natural drummer. I practiced, like mm -hmm. I was practiced 10 hours a day some days, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I said, yeah, man, I love it. People love drumming and jamming with you. He goes, oh, dude, man, you, you, I would, you know, we love to jam with you and stuff like this. You, you, you guys make the, your type of guy makes the best drummer, but, but there's one drawback. I go, oh, what's the drawback? Oh, you, the, the guy turns to me, one of the guys turns and goes, and the other guy confirmed, he goes, yeah, but you guys die young. Yeah. I'm like, oh. what? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. That's, that's hard to yeah. hear. Especially, you know, rest in peace, Taylor Hawkins, you know, you must oh, have heard that. God. Oh my God. Dude, that, yeah, that yeah. hit me. Like I was, I'm talking to my drum teacher now We're we're both yeah, yeah. that loss, but, but yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a live fast kind of, kind of, cause I feel like, you know, sometimes you have so much energy, you just burn out early, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But yeah. And that was, that was sort of me. I was going hard. And yeah. I realized at the time that run that resonated with me. Um, so when I came back and for me, that that's sort of the, one of my natural states as well, very rapid, but over the years I've learned uh, to try to keep it calm as calm as possible mm. because I don't want to be in that uh, amplified state uh, you, too often. 
do your videos serve as meditation for yourself? Because it serves as meditation for your viewers. It, do you find yourself in a meditative state when you're creating um, this content? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Creating it for sure, for sure. It like I like the, I love creating content. Like mm. may, maybe the articles I was writing back then. I'm going to get back into writing articles now. I realized that uh, to to reach that tranquil state i need to v verbalize some of the things that i need to uh, need to discuss right uh, but when i create videos content stuff as you know if you're a drum you know you're a drummer when you play gigs and stuff like this you have to be in your head before you go on mm -hmm. on stage right mm -hmm. you need to it's like writing a test it's like anything you need to do a little prep right and for me when i'm either live streaming and or editing videos or uh, or setting up when I'm, you know, looking at a scene, I want to set this up, set this up. It gets you into a creative mode that is just like, uh, just pleasing to the soul, right? Mm. It really is. And, um, and when I'm editing video, I'm not editing too much video right now. I'm taking live streams and taking out segments, but even that to me is, it, it just brings me peace. Mm -hmm. Because I, I do this. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Uh, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's, it's I spend so much time on it where I feel a little nauseous. You know, yeah. when you've worked so much that you, you feel a little nauseous. And, but you still want to go. You still want to go. You still want to do. And then you realize you got to step away. You need to really step away to rethink what it is that you're doing or um, just let it digest. Right. Mm -hmm. And then when I do create something, um, when I go through it, uh, it, the, the, some of the stuff that I've created, uh, it really it makes, like, I know I've done a good job when I, when I laugh, mm -hmm. when I, when I, uh, when I giggle, when it, it sometimes almost brings a tear to my eye. Mm -hmm. Like that's when I know I've done something right. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, that's the way it is. And I don't shoot for perfection anymore. I, 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 I tell my students, I shoot, you know, I expect minimum 80% from them. Right. Mm -hmm. And for me, if I'm able to get 80% of what I want to get across, across, I'm happy minimum. Yeah. Uh, um, sometimes I shoot for higher though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's cause you know, you're always, yeah. Yeah. That's when you're always, always going, you're always pushing. Um, yeah, I yeah. heard, I heard you say two words earlier, um, intimacy and, and social connectedness and, those two words resonate with me in my study of ASMR because it actually seems as though um, certain like one theory, um, and this is kind of in its rudimentary form, is that uh, ASMR experiences kind of mimic um, uh, what like primates do in terms of like social social grooming techniques and like social mm -hmm. proximity techniques, and it gives mm -hmm. you that same kind of ethic of care and stuff like that. and. And when I watch your videos and your live streams and I see uh, comments pouring in both in real time and yeah. after when you post on YouTube, um, it really seems as though you've built up quite a strong community of, yeah. of people. Yeah, I'm very lucky. That well. Yeah. So yeah. so I guess I guess what I'm saying is like, what do you see um, your mission as or your or your goal uh, when you create this content? for your viewers and uh, and like because uh, it makes them feel socially connected to you it's also a vehicle to bring up things that need to be talked about and aren't talked about enough specifically mm -hmm. you know free julian assange we need to scream that every mm -hmm. day from every rooftop yeah every every yeah. Man. um but yeah. yeah what do you see your kind of duty to your viewers in in this in kind of leading this socially connected uh group of people yeah, I, I, I don't want to say leading. I, the way I, I approach it is I'm a node. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Like I'm a node. And for me, I, I've mentioned this before many times, and I really believe this. Um, censorship is the enemy of humanity. Mm -hmm. End of story. Anybody that tries to silence anyone else, I don't care if you agree with them, disagree with them, if it's hate speech, if it's love speech, I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. People have a right to speak their mind. Mm -hmm. And the only thing we should do is engage them, not silence them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so for me, uh, because that's, that's, <laughs> they're like, if, 
if you look at history, human history, uh, the th where totalitarian fascism, uh, destructive, any type of uh, centralized power begins is by censorship, silencing any form of dissent, any form of questioning, any form of anything that goes against the centralized power. And that to me is my purpose here. My, my purpose is to act as a node and or a conduit and allow people to talk because that, that's the same thing to do. Mm -hmm. That yes. allows people to, to have some kind of feedback so they're not looping insane ideas, right? Mm -hmm. they, can, they can actually throw something out there and see the flaws in it. Mm -hmm. If there are flaws coming back at them, right? It's like what I tell uh, a lot of my students and a lot of people that uh, I've engaged uh, online and stuff like this which is something that I had to learn. Like I didn't, you know, going through centralized indoctrination centers, I didn't know how to read and write, not mm -hmm. properly, really. The garbage, go pure garbage, right? The first time I wrote a report, geophysics report, uh, coming out of university, you know, I went and worked as a geophysicist. I put a, you know, did a project, wrote the report, you know, gave it to my supervisor. I was all happy, big grin on my face, you know. That's what centralized indoctrination has told me. You know, you mm. finished the project, you handed it in. Congratulations, you're going to get a mark, right? Mm. Half an hour later, supervisor came, comes across, throws this thing, the report on my desk. goes, what the hell is this? Mm. I was mm. like, my ego went from here. I was in my early 20s, right? Ego yeah. went from here. Now the, he stomped yeah. on it. I opened yeah. the damn thing up. I've never seen so much red in my life. Wow. Right? So my writing abilities were horrendous right so i was really initially hesitant to get into blogging i didn't want to get into blogging because i didn't know how to write mm -hmm. uh, but i forced it on myself uh, because i knew i had to learn how to write how to communicate properly because i tell my students there's two things you have to learn uh, you have to get out of your education one of them is mathematics and the other one is your natural language uh, for us being English, right? You have to know those well. Why? Because those are both languages and those two are the things we use to communicate. Everything else is facts, hearsay, uh, studies, whatever it is, right? Mm. If you know your math and you know your English or your natural language, then you can, and if you have some critical thought, which mathematics allows you to do, you can look at anything else and teach yourself everything else. Yes, right? yes, yes. Okay. That, it's as simple as that. Sure, you can specialize in things. You need, you need to go specialize in certain something, get your certificate, get your degree, uh, and delve into that discipline. For sure, that takes a lot of energy and stuff like this. But if you don't know math and English, you don't know shit, yeah. right? So for me, the... Uh, you know, I've gone on a tangent, sort of forgot the, where we started the question you asked me, but um, it's, it, it, it took a lot of effort for me to learn how to write. Like, and I learned how to write online by exposing myself, right? Mm -hmm. Having a blog and writing. And I had a friend that would edit my work, right? You know, I would, I would write something up and send it to her. And she, she turned to me and said, she showed, nope, nope, nope. And she, she, she told me something which was I've taken to heart and I've used uh, throughout all my work. Uh, she told me that, look, Chicho, you know you've done editing a piece where there's nothing else you can take out. Yeah. Right? You're, you're, you're finished when there's nothing else you can take out. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did with my writing. And that's sort of what I do with my videos as well. Um, Live streams is more difficult because it's live. <laughs> yeah. I'm, you know, I'm putting myself out there, but I wanted to start doing live streams as well. So, um, you know, I put myself out there. Yeah. So that's what I tell everybody is, look, uh, and that's the reason why censorship is so horrendous, right? Mm -hmm. Because when we censor people, we don't allow them to share their ideas, share their beliefs, share what they think they know, mm -hmm. right? So if you're never sharing your music, your writing, your poetry, your ideas, mm -hmm. your life, because centralized power, technocrats, or the society says that's bad, mm -hmm. right? 
then how are you ever going to grow and incorporate that into your life where it's all underground, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's a recipe for disaster and it breeds extremism, which is what centralized power needs to thrive, right? Yeah. So that's, that's my take on, you know, long, long winded answer. My role is to eliminate censorship, yes. uh, right? And that's like you brought up Julian Assange. Julian Assange is the perfect example of centralized power censoring the one of the most important people, human beings in our in human history, really. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like literally. Right? It was the it was his work was the only thing that could actually shake um shake down the people in the position of power and you can tell because of how 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 they threw the book at him you know yeah 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 they've gone after him right it's the murder of christ as uh you wow. know it, it's yeah. it's the like because that's one thing uh um wilhelm reich wrote or robert anton wilson wrote R robert anton wilson um did it uh he portrayed it with uh oh man what was that musical that he wrote i've read it it's beautiful um uh, uh, yeah, no, it's called the murder of, is it murder of Christ? I think it's the murder of Christ. Uh, but he refers to it with uh, uh, writing about Wilhelm Reich, how centralized power annihilated him, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it is literally what we are watching happen in our society is to crucify of a truth teller, which if you connect it back to biblical times, you know, whatever your opinion might be about Jesus Christ, Christianity, whatever religion, even I'm a, Islam. I'm right? a religious studies uh, minor, so I'm, nice, I'm, yeah, nice. I'm solid. Yeah. yeah, like literally, it was the silencing of a truth teller. Yeah. Okay. Of Absolutely. a prophet, because that's what a prophet is, mm -hmm. right? And and you, I can connect this even to Muhammad Ali. There's a documentary I watched, which blew my mind. Right? There's a there's multiple Muhammad Ali documentaries. I don't know which one this was, but I remember them interviewing this uh, senior citizen black man in I don't know Mississippi or something like mm -hmm. this, and you know from poor part of town, right? Like mm -hmm. it, or florida somewhere like really like you could tell like this is this guy is ground level right and they interviewed him he was like i don't know 70 years old at the time or something this is like 20 years ago i saw this or 50 mm -hmm. yeah it must have been 20 years ago i saw this right and the interviewer says you know uh, muhammad ali they're talking about this they're talking about this and the guy goes muhammad ali he was a prophet mm -hmm. and he's, the guy's like what he's like what else do you call a truth teller he was a wow. prophet yeah right that's powerful powerful. That's powerful powerful yeah wow right yeah um wow yeah I, I need to sit with that for a second um but so also i just have i just have a couple more um kind of pointed questions about uh kind of your your method and stuff like that mm -hmm. um so there are kind of two categories of asmr i'm familiar with you know intentional and unintentional maybe like the yeah. intentional stuff is kind of people you know like yeah, doing right. the kind of stuff like that and and then there's some stuff on the complete other end of the spectrum which are like old lecture videos or mm -hmm. you know mr rogers name or bob ross or stuff like bob that where it's completely unintentional so my question to you is i'd love to hear where you think your content stands because it's labeled asmr and you're creating it probably with the intention of it being viewed as asmr but you're doing exactly what you want to do in your videos mm -hmm. and and kind of just making the content you want to make um so my my question is how intentional would you say your asmr is uh the the, the eating videos mm -hmm. they're intentional right yeah. but it's me sort of meditating with my food yeah, <laughs> like, yeah exactly it's like that's all it is i'm mm -hmm. not intentionally going to the speaker well no there are some i do do it but i'm not i'm not a intentionally asmr creator i do have some stuff that's that you could categorize it that way uh for me i like educational asmr yes right yes and for me like you said a lot of the lot of like i listen to me uh, lectures are asmr to me me too like me too. it's it's awesome like there's lectures or very calm uh sort of discussion of politics and economics from certain viewers that I see 
uh, that I follow. Like for example, uh, Ron Paul mm. is ASMR to me. I, I watched the Ron Paul report uh, and I lay there and I put it on sometimes on headphones mm. and I just, sometimes I pass out halfway yeah, through. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Uh, but I listen to it. It calms me down because you can feel the love in his voice. Right. Mm. To me, ASMR, educational ASMR, um, it that has as is is the core of it, right? Mm. Which is the love has to be there, the intention has to be there, the uh, not the ASMR aspect of it, but the the sharing of the information aspect of it. The, the, it's got to be um, authentic, right? Yes. Uh, so that to me is where I stand, and I use I use the tag ASMR. I put it on almost everything I do. Um, it applies to some more than others, but one of the reasons I, I put it on almost everything I do as well is because uh, of the algorithms. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Of the algorithms, right? Mm -hmm. It's a way around the sensors, right? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Right? It's a way around the sensors. And it's, it's exactly, and that just goes back to your point of ASMR being a vehicle for you to share your ideas and share your life. And specifically in this case, it sounds like it's the one thing keeping, you know, sensor tube from keep kicking you up. Wow, that, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's amazing. What, what a powerful tool. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, hundred percent. The only um, reason I'm still on there is like, it's, it's. I mean, one of the, one of the reasons is, I mean, how, how bad is it gonna look for sensor tube to take out one of the, you know, I started creating math videos, one of the, mm -hmm one of the early educational channels out there like yeah really like innovator innovator yeah. uh, to a certain degree I'm, I'm very proud of what i've done yeah. very proud like extremely proud uh like wow holy fuck right yeah. <laughs> like really yeah, as you should really. you should be yeah yeah like and at the time it's it's it at the time it was just something i had to do i didn't uh but it's after the fact that you look back and go, wow, Jesus, wow, wow. That was intense what I did, right? Uh, but it's not going to look good for them, but they don't care. They're technocrats, they're fascists now, right? Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll do it for as long as possible. I'll retain the channel for as long as possible. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll, we won't get knocked out, but... Uh, they, would, they would be doing the world a great disservice to try to mess with you, Chicho. That's how, that's how I <laughs> Um, kind of a kind of a two part question. So right now you mentioned you know uh, Ron Paul videos being ASMR yeah. for you. Could you uh, tell me one what other videos you watch now for ASMR and and even more importantly, uh, if you can recall kind of your first one or some of your first ASMR experiences where you probably didn't know what it was. But um, like I can remember being five years old, like watching golf videos and mm -hmm. having them and, and just passing on on the couch. So like, <laughs> what, what do you what do you remember some of your first ASMR experiences being? And then what do you watch now for ASMR? Yeah, the ASMR, uh, the, one of my fr uh, the first experiences would be getting haircuts, right? Like, yeah. you know, your kid. Oh, my God. Like, mm -hmm. like that to me. And for me, I haven't had I haven't gone to to get a haircut for a long time because I'm bald. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so. Yeah. So, but whenever I would go get a haircut, even even on uh, up to like or mid thirties or something like this, mm. uh, it was you know the hair would stand up and just mm. all of a sudden you feel sleepy, it's just like mm. just relaxed. And, uh, that to me is the first mm. uh, that I feel I felt, um, and you know there's been times where. Um, younger i don't i don't get that sensation as often anymore where all of a sudden you sort of sitting there you're th because i'm i think one of the reasons is i'm extremely busy like mm. really i've been going 150 percent for over 10 years now mm. uh but i used to uh, maybe in my retirement i'll start doing this again but mm. uh you know sit there and just think and just focus on something and watch nature birds uh because i i did geophysics so i was in nature a lot for 10 years i did a lot of environmental geophysics and uh, and i would go out in nature and just sit there and listen to the birds and listen to the wildlife and listen to the leaves falling you know cracking branches cracking and and whatnot so that to me was a lot of asmr 
as for what i watch for asmr i don't intentionally right now seek out asmr mm-hmm. uh for me the asmr i get is from uh, interviews lectures uh, like one of the paul i haven't watched it for a long time uh, uh some of the contemporaries of richard feynman mm-hmm. Um, where they were teaching physics, mathematics, quantum mechanics. So to me, a lot of uh, lot of scientific uh, lectures and discussions, it, it really calmed me down because I think it's the content as well. It's mm-hmm. sort of the delivery as well as the content because the content sort of reminds me that we are more than this, yes. right? Like that to me is really true peace, mm-hmm. right? Uh, what it really means to be human. What it really means to be human is not the material wealth or the material pleasures you require, is realizing that you are beyond the material, yeah. right? You are occupying matter and mm-hmm. animating matter, right? Once I get into that state, uh, you build a connection with everything around you. And that's, that's sort of what science... Uh, science does for me yeah um and those videos and those videos bring you peace um and i'd like to talk about the idea of peace because in your videos you're kind of uh the drums you keep beating which are very important to beat are free assange anti-war anti-pipeline anti-prohibition would you consider yourself an agent for peace in the world Uh, i Am I agent for peace? I, it's, that's a, can I be honored with such? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've created my own chaos in my life. Uh, and I still do at times, right? I let speed get to me mm-hmm. and I react too fast without thinking. Uh, am I an agent of peace? Uh, I think Julian Assange is an agent of peace. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't put myself in the same category. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope I hope you'll forgive me if I if I consider you as one. Um, uh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm okay. I'm just trying to. Um, yeah, I I feel like I've gotten the chance to ask so many so many great questions, um, and I don't want to don't want to keep you for too much longer. I have to actually go to my neuro lab. Oh gosh, you go for it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got one question for you. I got one question. For yeah, you. absolutely. What type of music do you play with your drums? What are what are you? Oh yeah, so uh, first I'll I'll ask you to check out my band. We're called um, Spud Cannon. Spud, oh uh, dude, send me the links. Send me the yeah, links. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. Send you, I'll send you. I'll yeah. send you. I'll send you links. I'll email, email, email it to me. Email yeah, it. Uh, we're Spud, we, Spud we, Cannon. Spud Cannon. Yeah, we consider ourselves uh, garage pop or or indie rock. It's uh, me, my friend Jackson, and then three. Then we got three girls. They're all the same height, and they each have a different hair color. It's like a choose your fighter kind of thing. It's really great. Um, so awesome. that's so that's I kind of do a lot of punk beats, pop nice. beats, but what I, my real passion is um, Afro Cuban music, Afro Cuban music and jazz. I'm working with this amazing um, drum teacher named Roland Vasquez at Vassar, and he's he's honestly more of a spiritual advisor than he is a yeah. drum teacher. Because yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what we talk about is he says, you know what, Ben you can play faster than me you can play whatever you want at this point because i've been i've been playing since i was five years old but what he's done for me which is amazing is i go in and we do 20 minutes of qigong meditation oh dude i do that i've done that too yeah (laughs) exactly and then and then we play the drums and he's and all he does is just critique my form and nice. and and has me do different breathing exercises because the thing awesome. an, an, an image he gave to me which is extremely powerful is i was playing something and he's like ben your entire brain is in your right hand right now i can tell just by the way you're playing it you are putting all of your attention into one of the four limbs that has to move you have to lower your heart rate bring yourself some peace and center yourself in the, your solar plexus so that equal amounts of energy are radiating out to each oh. of your limbs. And I thought about that. And then I'd go home, I'd go home and I'd just play the simplest little rudiments for an hour. And I would ascend to a different state of oh. consciousness. It, I find myself in a meditative state and I'm, 
out of my body but i'm in my body and it feels different so yeah drumming is definitely a meditation for me yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. for me and, it was too for me it was too and yeah. and the rhythms that um have we've that we've inherited from cuba from the oh, um african but... diaspora you know th those are just the the highest it's the he says it's the highest drum language in the uh you know northern hemisphere yeah yeah bona bona vista social club exactly yes yes i've, yes, yes, I've yes. seen them twice yeah with uh, bona vista cuban uh with uh ruben gonzalez piano mm. with uh ibrahim ferrer uh singing with rye cooter when he put out the first uh you know rye cooter yes uh yes 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 yeah rye cooter when he went to cuba to uh find these old school musicians uh afro-cuban musicians and he put out his first album with the bona vista social club i and they put out a second one as well i went and saw them live man twice i've oh, seen man. Them. dude uh afro-cuban i went to cuba five times in the 90s wow, uh, so wow. i love i love the cuban beats man love the cuban beats yeah. hits you to the soul like exactly exactly yeah it's, yeah it's moves a, the soul man moves exactly. the soul awesome so, awesome yeah man so we i mean you know what i i don't know uh if our paths will ever meet in person again but we need to we need to play some drums together <laughs> i part. can't play no, no more man i, I oh, haven't played for oh, dude that's the thing like uh, one thing with uh neil pert uh, i heard neil pert from rush uh, interview yeah. they, they they asked him you know people asked him why he practices so much you know they said neil why do you practice when so she goes because if i stop practicing uh i'll lose it yeah right no it's true it's very it's true. true it's true and i and i found out the hard way when i went to school away from my drum set mm -hmm. and when i came back uh, i couldn't do it again uh, to the yeah. level i was and but, I, I dropped it a long time ago yeah long well time. well you still well once a drummer always a drummer <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even, even, Maybe in even, my retirement. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh man. Well, Chicho, what what a pleasure talking to you ben, today, man. Thank we you have very we much. have so much we have so much more in common than I could ever have. Uh, yeah, Ben, thank you very much for the invite. It was it was Absolutely. a pleasure talking to you, man. It was a pleasure talking to you. Absolutely, you bring me man. peace this morning. Thank you uh, very well, much. Right, right, right back at you, man. I will yeah. send along some some links to uh, my band, which I would love for you to check out. Maybe some for other sure. some other drum sure. music and stuff like that. For sure. And I, uh, yeah, I hope I hope that our paths cross again. Yeah, um, and if and if you if you are uploading this anywhere, let me know where you're uploading it. If you're not uploading Absolutely. it, let me know. And if you're okay with it, um, I'll gladly upload this to my channel as well. Oh, beautiful! Uh, it, I would. I it would, would love be a that. pleasure. It would be a pleasure. I will. Okay, I will get you. I will get you the video. I will get you all of that, and I anticipate um having uh something finished by um late april i also gotta do yeah. my thesis and yeah I'm no touring, rush i'm no touring rush. all over the country but no, yeah we're gonna we're gonna no, make it happen. no rush we'll we go 420 happen. style brother yeah amen, amen, <laughs> amen, amen. yeah 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 exactly well awesome, uh, che cheers to you my friend peace I brother will, peace we'll be in contact for sure all for right. sure be well be well you all as well